So what's going on guys, KDC here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today we are checking out Diablo Immortal and we will see if this game is worth playing in 2022. So I played in the closed beta about 300 hours and at the beginning of the video we will look into the game itself. Then I will give you a quick overview of different game modes and activities that you can do as a solo or group player. And then lastly we will go into the gameplay and you will be able to see how the looting system works, what endgame looks like, how many dungeons and content there is to do and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So Diablo Immortal is a free to play MMORPG that is designed initially for only mobile devices but now it's available for both PC and iOS and Android. This game takes the place between the events of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 so you will find many similarities in the gameplay from both of these games. Many of Diablo Immortal activities are designed to be small in size so that means 4 player groups and no matter if you are playing on PC or mobile a single dungeon should usually take only about 10 to 15 minutes. The game is designed for touchscreen devices with virtual controls that overlay the display for PC players. So be aware that the gameplay and combat will be very similar to a mobile game, but still it will be easily playable on PC as well. Then as for using skills, the feature auto aim generally towards the nearest enemy, but as well the player can manually aim each skill. Some abilities will also charge, while their skill button is held, which will increase damage and AOE range. And unlike previous games in Diablo series, mana and other class specific resources have been removed in a favor of a cooldown based system. Performing attacks will also fill the character's ultimate meter, increasing the damage of your basic attacks for a limited time. So players can create one or more characters to use within the game. When creating a character you can select one of the six classes called Barbarian, Wizard, Monk, Necromancer, Demon Hunter and Crusader. Each class has 12 unlockable skills, from which the player can choose 5 to use on his skill bar. Each class in Diablo Immortal offers extensive versatility in skill progression. Throughout your game experience you will be able to personalize your build and fine tune your character to play the way you want. Unlike previous Diablo games in Diablo Immortal, there is a feature called Class Change, by which players can change the class for an existing character and receive a new set of appropriate items, without having to reset their progression. But this feature is not yet in the game, and developers said that after release, they will give us more information on this system. So throughout gameplay characters earn experience which allows them to increase their level. As characters increase their level they become more powerful, unlocking new skills and increasing the power of existing abilities. Once a player's character has reached the game's level cap of level 60 they can achieve additional paragon levels and this paragon system allows you to further improve your character by gaining bonus stats and unlocking unique specialization skills. Each paragon level grants you one paragon point to allocate in any open node. These points are only usable on the character themselves and they are not shared between your characters on your account. Paragon points grant access to five different paragon trees and the first one is called survivor that unlocks at paragon level 1 and mainly grants defensive buffs. Then we have vanquisher that unlocks at paragon level 1 as well and mainly grants offensive buffs. Then we have the treasure hunter that unlocks at paragon level 50 and grants magic, gold and experience bonuses. Then afterwards we have the gladiator that unlocks at paragon level 100 and this one gives pvp benefits and then lastly we have the soldier which unlocks at paragon level 150 and provides amazing pvp and pve bonuses for you and your group. Then as well the higher the paragon level the more and better legendary items you can find. In addition to these level based progressions the game features a battle pass reward system and within there are both free and paid tiers available. The free version gives you basic materials and other useful items while the paid version focuses more on cosmetics and different in-game currencies. So after you defeat enemies you can open treasure chests and pick up dropped items from the ground as well as in-game NPCs, sell similar items in exchange for the in-game currency called gold. Some items are also specific to particular enemies and such equipment can also be made more powerful by inserting gems and by using the rank up system which uses materials 
salvage from other items to make rare and legendary items. Gems can be added to a piece of gear to increase its base stats. Normal gems provide increased stats such as strength or agility, while legendary items also provide new capabilities, improving your build and the way you play. Once a legendary level gem reaches rank 10, it can be used to awaken, resulting in improved bonuses and a new appearance, which could be cool cosmetics like added flames to your sword, or swirls of energy to your magic staff, and much more. Players can also obtain items which are part of a set and drop from a specific location. If you get a matching set of 3 or 6 gear pieces, these items will give you additional bonuses such as healing and movement speed. In addition to items which change character statistics, the game also offers purely cosmetic items, which can be equipped to change the appearance of a character without changing your gameplay. Some cosmetic items will be available for specific factions to unlock for free by raising their dominance level, and some you will be able to buy for real life money. But this and other in-depth mechanics I will cover in my next videos. And then on top of all this, the game also features a cross-player marketplace, in which players can buy and sell materials and gems. And to avoid RMT players, which trade in-game items for real-life money, the marketplace does not allow you to purchase or trade any equipment, so the only way to get items is through gameplay. So in Diablo Immortal you can play alone or with any of the other adventurers that you will see as you explore the world. Each zone can host dozens of other players, with who you can join forces to fight larger scale zone events and special quests that require multiple participants. If you encounter anyone you want to adventure with, you have the option to create a party for up to 4 players, or you can make a clan to unlock even more social activities. One of the most fun PvE activities is the bestiary system that adds to the lore of Diablo Immortal and rewards you with loot. So basically after you complete the early parts of the main storyline, while leveling your character you can find missing pages that describe the different monsters you fight. And all of them are separated in three different types, called unique, rare and common. When you find one of these pages you can receive free gold, items and battle pass points. Then the next activity that you can do are bounties, and these are one of the most rewarding activities in Diablo Immortal. Similar to Diablo 3, there are short quests completed in open world areas or dungeons, and all daily missions can be done in about 30 to 45 minutes. So this is a nice activity that you can do every day. Then we have the challenging rifts, which in Diablo Immortal are dungeons where you clear levels of monsters, and each level will further increase the difficulty. Pushing up levels is fun and challenging, with powerful rewards making this activity very rewarding and then most importantly, there will be public leaderboards, so players will be able to compete against other players, and your rank on the leaderboards will determine how much rewards you get. And then besides all the basic activities like normal quests, zone events and etc, we have the raids and dungeons. And this activity is one of the core PvE gameplay parts, where you go into a dark caves and fight other monsters till you find the endgame boss and defeat him, which then in return will give you super cool rewards and much more. Normal dungeons you can do by yourself or with a group, and for now there are 7 dungeons currently, each one with their unique design and strategies. So then going over to Diablo Immortal PvP, and there is an activity called Battlegrounds, that is 8 vs 8 event that is available every day for 2 hours. There is a matchmaking with a rating system, that places you on a team based on your games played and win rate, and most importantly, all of this is solo queue, so you can form a party before playing this game mode. The main idea is that all players are split into two teams, attackers and defenders. Attackers have to destroy the ancient heart, while the defenders have to protect it, and whichever team succeeds in their mission will win the match. Then the second activity that you can do in Diablo Immortal is the Ancient Arena, that opens up every 3 hours. And this game mode is a free for all PvP event, where all players fight each other till the last man standing will win. And then at the end the winner gets to open up a chest and much more. So overall the PvP is only possible in these specific PvP events, and you won't have access to healing potions, but instead you get to use bandages outside of the combat. Bunch of your PvE builds and skills will do a lot less damage against players, so you will have to customize your character's build for PvP and much more. So then moving over to my last and final conclusions for Diablo Immortal. In closed beta I played about 300 hours and I liked it a lot. As I have played Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, this game was very similar to me, and for a mobile game this is 10 out of 10. In close beta I played on PC emulator, and the graphics and controls were really smooth and easy, so I have no concerns in that department. 
My only and the biggest problem with Diablo Immortal is the pay to win aspect. I couldn't really experience the pay to win system in the beta a lot, but from all the things that I have read this could be a concern. So the way I see it is that this game is 100% worth playing. As it is free to play you can't lose anything besides just time. Then you can play it on PC and mobile. So every single human has access to this game. And then lastly if this game is truly pay to win or not, I'm still gonna enjoy it for what it is. And if it ever becomes a real problem, then I will make a specific video on this topic and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Diablo Immortal guides or topics that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace. Yo, I ain't here for